Because if you've managed to get here, and he's not recognised that this is a line, which is what this is. So this may have a lot of trouble, seriously, but boom, that's what that is, it's a line. And like I said before about fast leaning a shot, he's not going to see it. And as long as you hit with enough impact and juice, you should get effect. You should at least get that effect, that separation. In which case, I'm going to continue immediately until he doesn't recover. Well, if you've got this, it's because you've got an inclination this person could be a problem. If you wasn't preemptive, you fucking should be. So if you ever get that feeling in a situation like this, where you think, oh, should I, or shouldn't I? You should. Trust your instinct. But for the first time, if somebody's never preemptively struck somebody before, let me tell you what it's like. So in Tenerife, there's this place called Siam Park. Can you remember that? Yeah. In Siam Park, they've got one of the fucking biggest, we used to have anyway, one of the biggest water slides in Europe. And it's quite funny when you go there, I don't really like heights or water, to be honest. But I went on. And when you're walking along, you've got all these like little punces with the glasses and the speedos and the nice Johnny Buff catalogue, Johnny Body, and they're walking along. Superman. Right. And as they're going up the stairs to the ride and recognising how much higher and higher and higher it's getting, their physiology is changing from loud and proud to what the fuck am I doing here? Do you know what I mean? You see them just dissipating with it like a drop direction. It's quite funny. And then they get to the top and then they're like, sit there and they're like, fuck, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And you get someone behind them, come on, mate, for fuck's sake, open the line up. Oh, I'll come in a minute. I'll come in a minute. That's what it's like if you've never preemptively struck somebody before and you are about to. That's how it feels. It's your first time ever. You feel like, oh, I'm fucking right. Oh, shit, fuck, fuck, fuck. That's how you feel. You, you start to uh, get that, um, what uh, Susan Jeffers used to call your the chatterbox, or what Jeff Thompson calls the inner opponent. If you start to think or define with logic at this point whilst you're going mid-brain, you'll talk yourself out. This is why certain things are really important. So you'll notice that whenever we throw a really good shot, it finishes with man down. Yeah? And the reason for that is I want to plug into my subconscious brain without any question of doubt. If I hit you hard enough, you'll go in there. So there's no doubt in my mind. Right? And not everybody trains that way. Some people, if I just give a really good shot, they just stand there and go, yeah, and carry on. In which case, they're like, that's the shot, right? So what does that mean? What it's translated to is, I've eaten with enough salt, nothing happened. Well, consciously whilst training, if you don't think this way, you'll think nothing of that. But in that moment, when you are just about to preempt, and you are on top of that slide about to go, where your subconscious brain will do anything it can, well-meaning, to talk you out of danger. It's well-meaning. It was like, no, don't do it. No, no, you don't get hard enough. He just stands there. That's what will jump in your head. Because when you are full of adrenaline and you are going mid-brain, your brain floats. And you start to get all sorts of abstract thoughts that are irrelevant. Anyone read Rory Miller's work? Yeah. Meditations of Violence. He talked about a time when he was as a prison guard, dragged into a cell and held up with a knife by two inmates. The only thing you could think about in that moment was what colour was the cake at his wedding? Totally irrelevant. The brain's way of putting you somewhere else so you don't have an emotional breakdown. As is denial. No, stand still, you'll be alright. Just shut your eyes, it'll go away. Denial will get you killed. Understand that now. Right? That's why you need to cultivate action triggers in your brain. So back in the day when Jeff used to say, ask a question, then hit, ask a question, then hit, he would do that thousands of times on a heavy bag. And the reason is for that he wanted to create an action trigger. So that when he went, what are you trying to say? Boom! <coughs> just hit. All by itself. Took away in decision. You need little tricks like that. So when we say man down, that's the blueprint I've put in my brain. So what won't jump into the forefront when I'm about to preempt is that I don't hit hard enough. Because I know I ain't hard enough. Does that make sense? Yeah. You get what you train for. You really, really do. Right? So at that point here, where I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't want to go over. Once you make that decision on that slide, and you just go, fuck it, and you go, that's the point in over time. That's like a snowball at the top of a mountain, rolling down the mountain, and it's full of snow. And as it rolls down, it just accumulates in massive speed 
just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and stronger. That's how it is once you've preempted the infusion. So let's say it takes five shots from the you there. You're going hard, hard, harder, hardest. You know what I mean? You just accelerate your confidence. So I metamorphosize while he withers. That's what can happen if you do this right. Does that make sense? But if you understand the adrenal map, which was written out by Jeff many years ago, Jeff Thompson, researching this on the internet, the adrenal map talks about pre-fight confrontation adrenaline. That's this. Oh, should I? Or shouldn't I? Yeah? Then it talks about adrenal dump, where something just some stimulus you get this flood of adrenaline. Anyone familiar with what I'm talking about or not? Yeah. Right. But the pre-fight adrenaline goes as soon as you use it. So you've got all this adrenaline floating around in your body, and it's like a racing car or a Ferrari at night. You've got all this power, you're revving the engine, but you're not in gear. So you're just wasting the energy. It's not until you shift and put it in gear that you accelerate forward that you use the fuel. Well, action, as soon as I preempt, I'm using the fuel. Does that make sense? Now that feeling of scared trepidation and indecision is gone because I'm utilising it. And as long as I continue winning, it will accelerate in strength. So if he's down and it's done, that's the idea. But I understand that anything can go wrong. So what we've just looked at here is that this moment when I've gone bah, boom, I had got past that fucking switch and I've gone anyway. But instead of my confidence accelerating, he hit me back. And he shoved me into the wall and started beating me down with an unfamiliar stimulus. Well, if that's totally unfamiliar, let me tell you what's just happened to you. You've got adrenaline, you successfully used it, but it didn't go your way. Which now happens is you get a double tap of adrenaline. He's beaten on you, you get secondary adrenal release, you're confused and that you lose. That's what can happen. So you need to get familiar with regular exposure to adrenaline. So some years ago, 2012, you were there, we did this seminar where I live. And we had 15 people in one restroom. Then we had one, two, three, or four fully kitted instructors, padded assailants, come into the uh, restroom and proper kick off. They would just kick off. Now you know that any one of you could be selected, but you don't know which one. You also don't know what you're going to get attacked with, because there was no script, it was a scenario. You could have to deal with one, two, or if you're really good, four, you don't know. So they're boisterous and they're banging around and you're still there thinking, is it me, is it me? And they might be giving loads of attention to this guy here, and then turn and hit you. So you get this adrenal dump, do you understand? The objective was to fight your way out, get out of the restroom. For most people, they got one experience. As soon as they got out of the restroom, they were like, oh, fuck, that was good. What's actually happened is they've gone from condition red, where they were working, out to massive relief, back to condition white. Switched off. Celebratory mode, euphoric state. If I noticed that, then as soon as they came out, end of script, I'd have them attacked again. Unannounced. No, they get secondary adrenaline. And when they get secondary adrenaline, they'll either freeze or they'll fight. The best way to get them to fight is getting exposure to it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if we were to make this totally spontaneous, where I add all these stimuluses together and you don't know what's happening, you might initially preempt and think it's all going your way, and then it goes tits up. Well, if it goes tits up with a stimuli that you've never experienced before, you will get beaten by secondary adrenaline. But if you've been there or are creating a blueprint for something similar, it's another day in the office. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. So you see where this is useful? Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So here, last one I'm going to give you. Right. I preempt. For the purpose, this is you, my pad. Right. I preempt right here, and he hits me with a good shot. Right. Pop a nice, decent shot. So I go here, boom, 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 and I'm here. So right in this moment, when I'm down on one knee, I'm patting interrupted. I am stunned. Yes? And if you've never drilled this before and you're here, he will continue his relentless assault and you'll lose. So I want to put you in here, right? So think about what I said before. 
He's waiting on me now. The Lord says, no, I can't stay here. Because something will happen. I'll have to act immediately. I'll have to recognize, shit, you've frozen. And the only way to break free is, is to attack. Act. Use the adrenaline. Make sense? So the closest weapon there is target counts. I could push like this, shut him down with a block, and I'm standing here and get one. Right, that's one option. I could, from here, as late as say, just boom, cut the groin, get up. Blast the groin, because that's now your high line. Or you could, from here, keep this cover up and attack this knee and this shoe. Oh, I'm going to this down, I'm going stand the ankle. Any one of those options valid. Objective, him down in one. You understand? Yes. Right, I'm going to talk you through that. This is what you're going to do. Right, 25%, nice and slowish. You're going to preempt, he takes a shot, drops to a knee. One. <coughs> Look at what you've got. So, you've got the ankle and the takedown with the knee, like I just showed. This is this, right, while you commit to make a smother, you could do that, but rather than do that, you might push-pull, you know, the principle of push-pull, I drive this elbow structure into the high on its knee, and I'm looking to push-pull so I can get up as quickly as possible, track the ankle, stamp it, one option, back up, another option is, hit the groin, then do that, so here, hit it, and it's preempt, so preempt first, Free Now you're going to push him over. Get back. Any one of these is fine. Job. So look at what happened there. Look at the failures. I didn't see him before he saw me. I didn't see him before he saw me and give me a problem. So I couldn't avoid an escape. I couldn't de-escalate because he wasn't open to negotiation. I preempted him, but he didn't go down. So I couldn't continue my attack because he hit me straight away and actually rattled me and knocked me to the knees. While I'm trying to clear my head, he's beating on me and I took him down to the ground and got gone. Now, we're going to go to the point where I'm preemptively striked, he's hit me in the head, bam, I'm down. Right? But as I go to do this, he needs me in the face. He's moving down here. He's ripped back, 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 if I don't successfully manage to do this, I'm going to bomb, he's going to punch on me, get in tight, he's going to take the belt, he's going to sit on this, this to get back up. See where we're going with it? So the preempt, he hit me. I got to here, this didn't work. He knocked me down, I kick out with my feet. That's as far as we're going. Right? You're going to do what you did at the wall. Kick out with your feet, make a separation, Get up as soon as you can and fuck off. <coughs> the next progression would be you don't do that. Then he gets the mount. In which case you've got a reverse mount. But that would take us to five o'clock. And we're not going to go to five o'clock. But we are going to do this. Clear? So I just want you to go straight away. 50%. You're going to go from here. Boosh. That's that. Knees me. Bam. Down. Kick it out. Off. Get back. Get back up. Yeah. Straight into it, let's go. Dialogue, whole nine yards. Go! Dialogue, give it death. Off you go. Oh, no. If you find yourself in a situation where you've never been before, you will be massively disorientated and confused. 
foggy. Inside of a fucking warring dynamic. Not a place you want to fucking frequent. <coughs> this module is geared towards helping the combative trainee, you, learn how to problem solve shit situations. Any suggestions made in terms of solution are not fixed in stone. Any number of variables can enter the equation and change something that would in turn require you to do something else or something different. Right? The idea is to get you thinking for yourself in order to problem solve. In training you have the luxury of slowing shit down, freeze framing and getting as many goes as you need to get it right. Hence 25%, 50%. Right? Then drill your workable conclusion into your motor memory, which is once you reach the realms of totally non-compliant. Right? You eventually progress to total non-compliance at 100% intensity with pads and a fully kitted training partner. This is as safe as we can make it. Right? This is where now you form a blueprint for your subconscious brain that will in turn be downloaded and in, uh, uh, imp implemented when the said stimulus presents itself. So rather than freeze with a pattern interrupt, you've got a familiar idea of something similar. Does that make sense? Right. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I understand that I'm not saying there is a best solution for everything that can go wrong inside of a violent dynamic. I'm not saying that. Right. But if you train this way into the realms of non-compliant spontaneity, then you will start to hardwire a potentially logical response in terms of branching skill. Do you understand the principle of branching? Something doesn't work, do something else, yes? Right, so that's what you're doing here. Above all else, this kind of reverse engineering to fix things that fail will train you to keep on fighting back, regardless of what happens next. This etched into your motor memory is a much more combative benefit than no solution on the disc, which will in turn bring on a state of hypervigilance or freeze, which is what you don't want. Do you see the point? Yes. Right, good. That's me for the day. All that remains is again to thank Harj and Dave for making this event possible. Give them a clap. And thank you to the new lot for giving up your weekend and working so well. Much appreciated. Right. right, just finished an awesome weekend seminar at um, UC Midlands in Nottingham. Dave Stevens' location, so me, Dave Stevens, and Harj. Brilliant two day seminar, lots of good people come up from the study groups and uh, from all over. Re really good level of uh, participation, so yeah, great, awesome.